So we have the top of the hour. Welcome to our Building Bridges session. Um, this session is about um, the two teams, like the GoKB team and the Folio team, working very closely together. And we, um, we really try to work and build an electronic resources workflow that will work for libraries and institutions. And that's why um, we have Daniel from, um, he's working at HBZ in the GoKB team. And I am um, from the VZG, very many abbreviations, but we are working for Consortia in Germany. Um, and I'm from the Folio team. We would like to show you how like, you can upload packages to the GoKB as knowledge base and how you then can work with the data in your Folio Iran world. So um, we have some slides prepared. And I think I have a feeling that virtual attendees can hear me and see me. Um, so if that's not the case, let us know. Thanks, Heiko. That's good. And then we have our slides here. And Daniel would do the first part. Can we choose this for you? OK. Uh, so thank you, Martina. Uh, First, I will uh, start with uh, telling you a very short uh, thing about the GoKB. So the GoKB is a knowledge base. That means it's a global exchange platform for metadata, but uh, for metadata of electronic resources like books, journals, and uh, other media such as uh, audio and video files that are organized in packages. And this is uh, quite important for us. And you know, um, um, what we have also in the GoKB is that we uh, are trying to reference every title um, with a unique and uh, identified title record so that you have a uniqueness on the title level in the, in the GoKB. Uh, we see it as a system that stands between uh, the provider, uh, provider data, raw provider data in, in form of KBAT files on the one side and on the other side. Uh, um, systems like ERM systems like Folio ERM, but also other systems uh, for for access control and so on. Um, the GoKB is optimized for automated processes. So we have uh, put uh, plenty of work into uh, interfaces and uh, our identifiers and uh, the different namespaces of identifiers. We try to, to get them as clear as possible so that uh, automated processes are working. And uh, one special thing is that it's maintained by the curator group. So there's no central reduct uh, 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 team uh, in, the, in the middle, but uh, the, um, um, uh, the maintenance of the packages is done by the curatory groups itself. Curatory groups that can be libraries, that can be consortium organizations, but also some providers that uh, are putting uh, their data into the GoKB by themselves. Um, what uh, GoKB, we try to be more than a data container and uh, we do this uh, via enrichment. So we try to enrich our data through external databases that applies to journals at the moment. Uh, we try to disambiguate and deduplicate the data. Uh, we have a quite thorough uh, analysis for syntactic and also semantic errors. Semantic errors like uh, like ISSN, uh, the ISSN, so not on the syntactic level, but on the electronic ISSN that is, uh, um, uh, that is uh, given to us as print ISSN and so uh, such things. And we have uh, automatic workflows, but also manual, the manual workflows to, to get our data and shape to correct them. So all those uh, data quality improvement, uh, so that uh, the reports that are in CAVA data, that they don't uh, get into the, the systems like EMS and so on. So this uh, uh, is the process uh, we do with the GoKB. So on the one side, you see uh, the provider data in form of CAVA, but we, we have also other um, repositories where we get our data from. We have on the uh, lower level here, we have the packages, and in green, you see those reference titles, reference titles that are the unique uh, and bibliographic uh, enriched titles uh, that are linked to the package titles. 
And uh, you see some of the databases we get our uh, enrichment information from. And we provide it mostly for folio, but uh, we are uh, right now we're starting to give them also to other um, uh, systems like Xdeepers Alma. So that's enough of the GOPB. Now I want to show you the package uh, that starts our journey on the um, provider side. Um, and sorry. Just, I have to look for the correct direction. I'm sharing this with you. Yeah, okay. So uh, this package we want to share with you. This is the uh, product of package, and we, we choose this package of two reasons. First, it's a Taylor Francis journal package, and Taylor Francis data is, is great. So we are very happy with Taylor Francis data. I have to say that because I have uh, uh, made an error. Uh, to show you inside the original data. So it's not uh, Taylor Francis' fault, but it's only for me um, showed, shown to you. And uh, the second reason is uh, that our library, uh, that the curatorial group that provides, uh, that maintains this package is ZBW. And um, this is one of the uh, fittest and uh, best curatorial groups we have. And so we know that every detail is in, is in is correct. <laughs> so, but uh, as this package is here on the product of system. We don't want to pay, uh, show you the um, this package because I just want to show you how it is entered. Um, I will copy this on our testing system. Uh, okay. Where I want to create this package. Um, you see, our testing system has a blue. Uh, a blue border so that we don't confuse them with the uh, uh, productive system. Um, first, um, you have to, to give here the, the uh, essential information, uh, such as, um, oh, I need, uh, this, uh, so, such as a package name that has to be unique. So I will put an example 40 or something uh, by it. Um, and we have a, uh, a large database uh, of providers and um, the Taylor and Francis is obviously um, and, and the platform. Platforms are quite important to us. So we have to, to find both provider and Taylor and Francis and the platform uh, for ebooks. Taylor and Francis has their own platform. So we have different uh, Taylor and Francis platforms here. And this is the most essential data we have here. Um, I could talk to you about package properties we have here. I want to go into detail um, because of time, but there you can um, uh, lots of metadata on the package level you can enter. Um, the interesting part is this, this year, okay, about package titles. There is the possibility to uh, set up an automatic important update, update, but I will show it to you uh, the manual way. So to import um, a file. So this one. And you see there's in Kvart files, there's also a title ID. And there, this title ID um, belongs to different namespaces that are uh, um, um, by the, um, defined by the provider. So we have to, to enter here the namespace for the provider. As um, uh, uh, we know this namespace, it's linked to the uh, Taylor Francis provider, so it's automatically filled in here. And um, then can validate the data. This data is, as you see here, is technically correct. It's not semantically because of the error I, um, I made into the file. And after 
after confirmation, I can go to the last screen where I see that now HPZ is a repository group, it's my repository group, so HPZ is set automatically. I will start the submit list. So, so now you see um, there's a keyword import that has started now, and uh, this is uh, I shortened the title. It's uh, 2,700 titles, I think, but I shortened it to some some 100 titles to get it uh, done faster. You see, the import has been done uh, successfully, and now there's the matching and creation process where we get our reference title linked or a new reference title created uh, from the data we imported. So this has also been done. <coughs> So, so I reload this page. So now we have uh, all the information we want to have. The package status uh, are here. And uh, as summary, on the first page, you also see something that has gone awry. This is. Uh, uh, this is a review request. It's an ISSN conflict, and this is the one I, I put in intentionally. So uh, what you have here is one of the workflows. I want to show you very short the workflow we are doing here uh, to get those um, those uh, potential errors uh, corrected. You see here, this is the reference title who existed before. And we have an EISSN and a PISSN. These are correct. I have tested them. But uh, on the uh, package title I imported, you see the, PL, uh, the print ISSN and the electronic ISSN are the same. So one of them is uh, set for. I can um, click this link. And uh, by clicking this link, I would uh, come to, uh, in this case, to the uh, ISSN um, portal where I see this is uh, an electronic title, an electronic ISSN. So the print, sorry, uh, go back. Okay. So the down here. Um, so this is clearly a wrong print ISSN. I can um, I can delete it and um, our. Um, uh, review request is done. I can confirm it. So now, uh, this I wanted to show you. Now I have um, my correct package titles here. Package title, if you want to have a look at it, they are always connected to a real title, to a reference title. Uh, they have all the information came out, uh, uh, that were in the KBAT file, such as the identifiers that you see, the rep 20. This is the title ID. ID um, that was in the column title ID is uh, correctly uh, put into the Taylor Francis namespace. You have, you have the coverage date and so on. So this is all things that are pertinent to the title in the KBAC file itself. But if you go to the reference title, um, then you have additional information that is enriched such as uh, the publishing dates of the title, such as uh, additional IDs, such as a ZDD ID and quite important ID terms. We could also uh, DDC classes, not in this case, uh, it's quite new, uh, but uh, you, can, you could have here. Mm -hmm. So the, everything is done. The only things you have to do now is, um, To, to do two the checks, this editing stat status, it's approved. I approve it because I, I checked everything. And the list status, the title uh, list is also correct because I solved all review requests. It's also checked. And after, sorry, and after submitting it, the package is ready to come into the into a folio. Mm -hmm. Yes, then I will now continue with the folio part.
So we are now in Folio, and I mean, um, we we imagined to um, demo a workflow from GoKB to Folio, um, and I would pretend that Daniel and I are working in the same library, and Daniel is the one to upload the packages to GoKB, and I am the um, ERAM and acquisitions librarian working in Folio ERAM. Um, and so um, this is a package that we have already ordered that Daniel has uploaded. So I have in my system already created a purchase order line for it. And we already have an agreement for this package because it has been a negotiation. And first thing I would do is look at the, the uh, agreement for the package. And you see first error, I'm in the wrong system. Um, because I have two test systems prepared. Um, and they look very similar, um, all have this gray bar at the top. So um, we are now working in my number four that will become relevant later on um, when we will be working in the other system because we are another institution. So quite complicated maybe. Um, so um, I am showing you now the agreement that we have already created because like this neg negotiation process took some time already in advance. And you can see that we have a status in negotiation um, and we have no agreement lines connected at the moment. Um, and we've created this agreement in advance um, in addition to the purchase order line or even before the purchase order line was created to be able to track. And if you then decide that you don't want to purchase this package, then you have, do you can record that you like analyzed it and that you decided not to do that. So that's why it's already created and we can change the status afterwards. What I have done in addition to this, um, you, I have um, a dashboard where I monitor all agreements without agreement lines. And I can go through this, this, this list of agreements without agreement lines every now and then, or maybe in a real life use case, Daniel is a nice colleague, he would phone me or email me or come to my office and tell me that he had uploaded the package. So then I will now go back to the agreements app and the agreements app has two levels or two, two tabs. We have been in the agreement search where we just looked at the Taylor and Francis package that we have as well the local knowledge base. And in, in our setup, we are um, using the local knowledge base where we um, import data from GoKB on a regular basis. So um, data is synchronized regularly and the local knowledge base is kind of a mirror of the GoKB as an external source. So and now I need to find the Taylor and Francis package that we have purchased and that we now want to add as an agreement line. And I can search for the specific title or I can use the search and filter terms. It should be a current package. It should be a global package. Um, and let's do this again. There you go. And if we have just one um, result, um, the package or the record opens automatically in, in a detail view. I think that's very handy. And you can see here, like, this is all information that Daniel has added to the GoKB. Um, and that's really um, a huge advantage to my mind. So you have all the necessary information that's, I think, um, very clear that you know the provider. But you have as well the source because to folio your RAM to the local knowledge base, you can add multiple external sources. Depends on your on your setup. Um, we have the package status because a package can be current, it can be um, deleted, it can, can be archived. That's something that I would manage in GoKB, and that will be reflected in my local knowledge base and my folio URM. 
Um, I have multiple references and identifiers um, because those identifiers are available in the GoKB. We have them in our local knowledge base and folio as well. And we can use those in third party systems. So for instance, what we do in, in our network or what we plan in our network is whenever an institution has access to a specific resource or package or is managing this package in their elect um, agreements app, then we will automatically in our union catalog create an item for this at the bibliographic record. And to meet the correct bibliographic record, we need the, um, the unique and persistent identifiers. Um, we have um, the co content type. In this case, we have journals, and this is a global package. It could be local or consortial or whatever, but that's all coming from the GoKB as the external source. We have the extended package information, and there you can see the description that has been entered. Um, I have a link to the package on the provider platform, as well as a link directly back to the GoKB, which is um, very handy as well, because if you want to manage, change, check anything, you have this direct link back to the GoKB. More identifiers, um, and then you can already see um, we have so far no agreements for this package, so it's a good way of doing some um, pre-acquisition searching. And I then have from GrowKB the e-resources that are in my package. And this is the list of current um, e-resources. There are no future and dropped ones. Um, and if I want to check individual titles and want to check whether I can purchase them on different platforms or in different packages, I couldn't even dig deeper into the knowledge base. And for instance, I will open the first title and then we could check and have a look at that so, um, and um, see the title details and we could see um, where else we can purchase this title. So this is, uh, we are now no longer looking at the package, but at the title. So you have different identifiers. Very important for our German world is the journal database ID. Um, but we have others as well. And then you can see here, um, again, options for acquiring this e-resource and you see in which packages and on which platforms you can purchase this specific title. And you can add this title to your agreement line or agreement as a package or as an individual title. And I think I will close this to not be um, confused later on. Um, we can now add this package to our basket and the basket is like the place where I put everything that I want to link to my agreements. And the basket is accessible via this blue button at the top right corner. Um, I can view one item now and that's the package I've just added and I can always like create a new agreement if I don't have one. But in this case, we have an existing agreement for it. That's a negotiation status. And then I would just add it to that agreement. Okay, and then I'm directly led to the agreement that I've just shown you earlier. The one difference is that we now have an agreement line connected. And you see here now as well, the titles that are managed under this agreement. So all the current titles that are in this package um, I can again check, I see the identifiers, you have links to everywhere to your local knowledge base to the um, specific title or to the title on the provider platform. You see the coverage and you can export the current title list as JSON or KBAT if you want to work outside the system with it. So, and what will I do now? I need to change the status. So it's now active. And I will go to the agreement line and then link here the purchase order line that's already existing. And then I have everything together. And please don't wonder, this is a test system, so there is not a lot of data in my system. Um, so I think for Taylor should find a result that I can use. So this is the PO line um, that I was looking for, and um, I can now link it to my agreement line. And then again, in my system, I have direct links from one record to the other. And if you have connected to your purchase order line and inventory item, you see that here as well as a link. I can close. 
And while this saves, I may already have a look back at my dashboard. And we now should see that um, we have in my widget agreements without AGLs, we don't see anything. Um, I, I just trust me. Um, you you should see only two um, two items there. Maybe I can reload the page. And while we wait, um, there is. Another system that I will show you in a second, and we um, we pretend um, that we are now another institution, and this is one of the advantages of using OKB and your folio internal knowledge base as well, um, is that you, Daniel has done it as my colleague, but another institution can reuse the package that has been uploaded by this curatory group. So I'm now um, in another test system, Minerva 3, um, Minerva 3, sorry, is the name. Um, and we can now search again for our uh, agreement. Again, I've called a Taylor and Francis Social Sciences. In this in institution, we are as well negotiating this package and we're not yet decided whether we want to purchase it. Um, and so, and you can see the difference, um, the drop down list and values are here in German, unfortunately, but in Verhandlung means a negotiation. We have no agreement lines linked here in the system, and it's still status in negotiation. And um, because we have another Taylor and Francis agreement, Econ Consortium Leibniz, that's about packet, uh, about journals. I'm not really sure, is there an overlap? So I can check within my folio system and um, do some ERM comparisons in another app in folio. So it's one of um, the other folio ERM apps where I can select two comparison points and compare these comparison comparison points with each other. Um, and I've done that before we met today. So I have picked like the Econ Consortium Leibniz Agreement and the package on social science and humanities to see whether there is an overlap and whether it makes sense for my institution to purchase this package. Um, and I can see the comparison report here. Again, take some time. And you can see that we mainly have no overlap. There is partial overlap. So maybe we need to do some more analysis. But that's very, very um, nice. I think that I really can use the data that I have in my local knowledge base to work with it and to compare the different packages and records with each other. And if we just have a quick look on how we would set up this comparison, um, again, I will name it Taylor and Francis package. Um, and you see here you can add a package or an agreement. Um, so you can compare two packages with each other, two agreements or one package and one agreement. And when I add a package, I'm searching in the local knowledge base. So um, I don't know, as I called it Taylor and Francis, I may want to have a Taylor and Francis package. Let's pick um, just another one, this one, and then I can, um, as mentioned, add another package or I can compare to an agreement. And that means um, it compares to all the resources that are managed under that agreement. That may not only be one package, but maybe multiple or individual titles. And this is then again um, linking to my records in my system. And let's pick the language awareness and with safe and close, now this job report will run. Okay, let me open Good, and um, so um, the, the huge advantage in Polio is really that if you connect this external source and the GoKB, you have a lot of data in your system um, you have the, the title list of, of everything you manage in your system, so you can really check what title is in a package. If there is a user at the information desk, 
asking why don't I have access? You can directly search for this title in your local knowledge base. So if we go back maybe to the local KB search, you can see here you have um, a package search that we just used earlier for Taylor and Francis search, but you could check as well for specific titles and then see, um, do I manage them in one of my agreements? Like maybe this agreement has already ended and um, like where can I purchase these specific titles? I don't know whether I would overwhelm if I just search for journal and cost. And then you see, um, I mean, this is not a very specific search, but you can see here now, um, you can check for the specific title and see, um, again, do I have agreements for this e-resource and what would be the, the options for acquiring this e-resource? And I can um, see that I, this is already managed in one of my agreements. And so I would it would be easy for me to decide this doesn't need purchasing again, maybe. And what I can do then in addition is really check what's wrong with this, why maybe my does my user not have access. And because I manage all the data here, I have the link to my organization. So if I would need to contact a vendor, I have the link to the organization's record in my system. Um, and could go there and see whom do I need to contact because we have this error in our system or even check with our internal contacts and maybe colleagues um, to, to know the selector, for instance, do we want to purchase this again or do we want to have um, the title in, in a different package? Okay, um, let, I will do a last try maybe of um, showing you the dashboard so that you can know that I'm not lying about this. <laughs> <laughs> so last, last try, last chance for the system. If that's not happening, um, we will um, have a look at our last slide before we come to the question section. It doesn't look too good, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, so you can see now we have this Taylor and Francis social science agreement is no longer listed here because it has now an agreement line and that would be an agreement that I would not need to check again for missing agreement lines in the future. Mm -hmm. Our slides. Skip these, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why did we wanna wanna show you how like we how um the system worked together. Like how can you have um these working workflows from really uploading to go KB and then synchronizing the data into your local knowledge base where you can use it within your library management system. So you can link it to other necessary records that you want to link to. Um, and you, you really see a lot of data that is a good basis for other things. Like if we can have the filtering results on our dashboards, you can do ERAM comparison reports. And in one of our last ERAM SIG calls, we talked about maybe extending the functionality so that, that I can easily be notified about titles that have dropped a package um, that's not yet working, but we have the basis because we have the data in our system. Um, and about us, I don't know whether, whether you wanna, wanna start. Um, okay, thank you, I can take over. So our communities in Germany, we, close, we are working really closely together. So uh, there's uh, a sharing of uh, requirements and so on a regular basis. We have uh, different um, groups where we uh, where we exchange our requirements and uh, we are um, considering how if uh, the cooperation could be improved and uh, how everyone could in, um, benefit from this cooperation. Um, we have also personnel that works in both. Um, on both teams so that there's a really uh, close connection in, in terms of staff. Um, we uh, <clears throat> have uh, regular meetings like uh, uh, shared requirements meeting every two weeks 
where uh, the, we would go to the uh, environments that are uh, come up in polio and mostly in polio, and how we can we can um, support this uh, in the GoKB. And uh, there's also a power user meeting monthly. This one is uh, virtually held virtually, where uh, right at the moment from different uh, German library networks, we have uh, one or two uh, folio uh, users uh, that are also the users of the GoKB where we ask them what's, uh, uh, how does it work and where are the uh, um, um, where the problems in working with both of sit together. And right now we want to, to build up an infrastructure, an infrastructure for keeping track of our shared requirements. Shared requirements, that means there are lots of requirements that we can't solve mutually, but we, uh, we have to involve third parties, uh, other library systems, other services in the German and international library landscape, uh, where we want to go together to, to give them our requirements, where we uh, want to to, to speak with a single voice. And uh, I think this is a good sign of our cooperation. And uh, together, we are just stronger and we have more input and more power uh, to get things done. Yeah. Okay. So I think that was it for today. I think we did not share the last slide. So I will do that now. But uh, you can already think about questions if you want to. Uh, yeah, I need to work here and then this now. Mm -hmm. So this was sorry, I'm a virtual folks. Um, this was the last slide that we Daniel just explained, and uh, this is now on screen for you. Sorry for not sharing that earlier. Any questions or any requirements that you already want to let us know? Because what is here on the slide, we really mean that. Um, it's great to learn about what you need and what you wish for, and great to learn about new requirements. That doesn't mean that we can develop them. We, we can develop them straight away, but um, we will try to do that. Any questions from the virtual participants? Because we have no raised hands in the room. Not yet. There's something we can could show you again, go deeper. And those uh, at some points we were very fast to to um, don't uh, uh, so that we don't uh, we skip some things uh, because we were afraid to run out of time. Ah, okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks, that's all brilliant. So it's not be a very simple question for everyone in the room. Maybe this more What did the reference table? Ah, okay. I see. Um, I will show you um, this slide. Um, a reference title is a we um, we wanted to differentiate between between the, the k record of the title, that means the um, the OKB representation of the k record. So that we have the k record as it is uh, the, uh, the package title, that is uh, a title that is bound to a package with all the information the package needs, uh, the coverage of the title, and so on, the identifiers that were in the k file. But a reference title is a single unique title that links to all the, uh, the titles in different packages that are the same. I can show it, maybe I can show it to you in the system itself. Oh, so okay. again. So this is the package title. And all, if all the information we have here, this is information that stems from the k file. And all this information we have here is the information that um, is uh, relevant if you want to uh, to know how uh, um, 
if you want to subscribe to that package, if you want to know the coverage of the um, uh, of the title in the package itself. But there's also this reference title. That means this is the overall bibliographic information of this title. You see, there are additional identifiers that weren't in the KBAT file. You see, there's the ZB ID and the EZB ID, two German identifiers we have. There's also um, a publishing date, published from 2010 uh, to 2010. In this case, it's the same as the coverage date, but it doesn't have to be the same as the coverage date. But there is uh, all the uh, overall bibliographic information uh, of such as subjects, not in this case because we didn't um, um, didn't enrich the subjects, uh, but uh, you could enrich it here um, via DDC classes and so on. And regarding the package titles, you see this unique and single reference title is linked to all the different representations of this title in different packages. So uh, this title, uh, what is it called? It's International Journal of Housing Policy. You have it in those packages here. It's uh, three time references packages, obviously, but also an EBSCO Academic Classical Premier. So you can see uh, where this title is, is hosted and then which packages you have this title. Where do you get the uh, references from? Uh, we get them from the uh, German uh, serial database. It's a uh, uh, quite large mm -hmm. database that is also uh, the base for um, for World Cup uh, journal uh, entries, for World Cup journal records. So um, I, it's it's obviously journal, but it's also uh, with a, a global focus. Uh, so it has uh, lots of uh, I think a really large corpus of journal metadata. We get it from there. Uh, we don't have an external database yet for ebook titles. So um, it's, I think, uh, lots more complicated for ebook titles, but we hope that uh, we will have a solution in the future for ebook titles. Questions? Yeah. 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 And um, open up the question. So, is there a separate UUID for the GoKB titles packages? The GoKB UUID, which is also in the local KB portfolio after the upload next to the usual IDs, I saw something. Yes, we have for all components we have in the GoKB, we have a GoKB UUID. So, there's a GoKB UUID for titles, there's a GoKB UUID for packages, there's a GoKB UUID for platforms itself. And we have all of those uh, UIDs also in our APIs. So uh, um, I think regarding Podio, you can uh, tell more, but uh, all systems that get their data from the GoCoD can have this UID and uh, can backtrack via this UID the title, the package, and the co component in GoCoD. Yes, and um, I hope you can see the, the screen. Um... Am I sharing? Yes, I'm sharing. Um, this is in Folio um, where you saw the, the GoKB UUID. It's here on the, the package level, for instance. And we have worked, and now I'm a bit nervous because the PO is sitting in the room. Um, uh, oh, and Stephen. Um, we have worked the past month um, on um, matching in Folio's local knowledge base via the work source ID. So we are matching now via the GoKB UUID instead of um, identifiers such as ISBN or I, um, ISSN or um, title. So, and that's why we are really nearly mirroring the, the GoKB, except for the, the, the cases where you have not a list that, is, that says checked, for instance, or where you have any errors. Uh, you have more questions? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, this one's really, really useful. We're, we're not using the uh, at the moment or anything, so how would we start? Uh, we start by mailing, by mailing us. <laughs> <laughs> this would be uh, absolutely the best uh, way. So um, um, we could uh, we could uh, make a call where we can show you um, uh, the, the GoKB, uh, the, the deeper GoKB, um, 
not only on the surface like now. And uh, then uh, when you could start, you would get uh, a curriculum group and uh, you, you could uh, um, register yourself. We have to, to, uh, to accept uh, you and, and give you the necessary uh, um, editor rights. But then uh, if you would start, so every uh, and you're in charge of your own packages, so you can do the same uh, thing I would at the moment you could do it yourself. We have tutorials and we can show you uh, in, in how this is done. And yeah, so just mail us. Mm -hmm. I didn't manage to send me an invoice. Is is can anyone join or is there sort a of cost to join you? No, it's free. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I think we may have an appointment already. Um, so so Daniel will, will be present. Um, so sometimes um, libraries contact us because we are using Folio and GoFB and everyone is really invited to do so. And then we we demo how we use the system mm -hmm. and how those work together. Um, and um, I've just opened um, the Folio settings app where we can see how you would connect the local KB to your portfolio system. So it's quite easy um, you to do some settings and then the synchronization starts. And sure, you need yeah. to, to um, do the things that Daniel mentioned earlier. Yeah. Okay, we have four minutes, I think, before we need to stop. Any more questions? I just want to open up the slide with our contact information. So you can mail us always. And as mentioned, tell us your requirements, let us know whether we can help or demo or show you anything. And then um, let's see. Thank you.